I can only imagine how that sky was half an hour ago, three quarters of an hour ago. I was still deep asleep, thanks be to God. And it must have been incredibly red, I could imagine. Maybe it wasn't, but the possibilities are high. It was like the sky we had yesterday. Well, you can see Mount Hermon as well. I'll pause in a second to show you again. The Mount of Beatitudes is very familiar to you after all of our sunrise strolls and chats. Strolls and chats. So there we have the Mount of Beatitudes right on the screen, in the center of the screen. With those plastic covers over the banana growth. And then back behind the hill there on which the Mount of Beatitudes is contextualized, then there's in the very center of the screen, protruding over that hill, you have that gray heavy shadow behind, and that's Mount Hermon in the distance. It's about, what would I say, 40 miles from here, probably. I haven't measured the mileage. You can do it in a good hour if there isn't a problem with traffic. And the roads are uh, basically secondary roads because it's not a freeway. Or it's like a major highway, but not a freeway. A lot, a lot of the way. Would you like to go on a ride? On a jet ski? I don't know how the video would turn out for those who don't join the ride. Probably almost as bumpy as those who are more bumpy than for those who are on the ride. So people here enjoying their time out at the lake. Bokratov and Akno Sim Shidur Hai. Ah, Sabal Khair. Keep, keep, welcome. Uh, Ramadan Karim. Wa Mubarak. I realize sometimes that you forget from doing these things, but one of the guys immediately covered his face. He didn't want to be on the camera, so it's very important to be respectful of that. Not too many tents, but I'm sure tonight there'll be lots of tents set up here. And I have one more week of Ramadan to go. So there'll be a huge celebration when it's over, probably next Thursday. It all depends on the exact reading of the moon as the calendar marker. Just like the Jewish people when they're celebrating Shabbat. Once there are three stars out there, then it's Shabbat. And then it's over when there are three stars the next evening because the first day of the week has begun. In Western world, we think of the first of the days starting at dawn, but in the, this culture, the days start with the, with the nightfall. So the night belongs to the day that follows. I hope I got that right. A lot of cars over here. I don't see where their tents are, but there, there are three or four tents, but not proportioned to the number of cars, except they all just came one in each one. But even then, see how Mount Arbel is going brown? And here as well, this used to all be so green. But obviously there's a lot of human traffic here as well. Well, the sun came out pretty late this morning because of the cloud. Also, I got late started, I have to comment to you, since you were waiting for me, that um, it was very difficult to start. I, I had to uh, close down the phone twice or three times to be able to open Facebook in its ability to live stream. I had Facebook opened. I'm beginning to learn a few little tricks with it. New system. 
but it wouldn't start the live stream. It said uh, error occurred, uh, uh, live stream impossible or whatever, not possible to live stream. And there was some negative there, but there was no way to start it. So I had to just simply turn off the phone completely and restart a couple of times. So that explains the delay for all you live streamers. The people who are listening to this as a recording afterwards uh, won't realize that you were waiting because I told you I would be starting and we weren't able to start. That's part of the live streaming experience here, you know. Oh, I really like to have seen this three quarters of an hour ago before at dawn. Because it's possible that all this cloud became red. Yesterday we got a nice bit of red, really nice. Delightful, beautiful. We got the dawn in, so we started quite a bit earlier. Dawn is usually a good half hour before sunrise. Somebody sent me some notes, a couple of people sent notes about this tree, and I'm sorry that since I just woke up and realized that it was basically almost sunrise time, although the sun hadn't risen visibly. Um, Somebody sent notes about this tree and I haven't seen them. <laughs> Apparently they eat them in the Philippines, but I don't take that as license to eat them. Oh yes, now I remember, somebody also mentioned about it being called, possibly called Christ thorn, traditionally. And I want to get closer here to see the thorns. So, yep, yes, oh yes. There are these little hook thorns in here. Now, the fact that there would be called Christ Thorn wouldn't necessarily mean that, but I'm just, I know that in one of the thorns that Professor Danine of Blessed Memory identified in his book from the Shroud of Turin studies, it had double thorns, and one of them was a hook thorn, like you see here. And then, but there was a big thorn coming out from it. So the, the ones he identified botanically on the shroud have a different thorn, to be very frank about that. But these thorns are very mean. You see, they're very small. Oops, I'm after getting one there with my finger a little bit. A little proud. Let me see. It's hard to see them, isn't it? But look at that here. Up here, look at this. Yes. So maybe in the older wood, you have the two. Actually, you do. You have the one here. You see, there's one, one up there, uh, up here. There, and then there's a little turn here. So you have, maybe this is it. Well, they call it the Christ thorn, apparently. Look at all the fruit. Look at all the fruit. It wasn't easy to arrive at the position we're reading about today of celebration and joy with the whole church in unity. It wasn't easy to receive all that light. It was difficult. It's not easy for a family to come to unity when there's a big disagreement about how to proceed on a particular issue. It's not easy. And some obviously give way and others have to be gentle and to agree together on how to do something. Unity has a, has a big price of surrender, of, of selfish, of, of one's own personal immediate interest, decisions, take on things. And if one is stubborn and doesn't want to listen, doesn't want to enter into the experience of the others to understand where they're coming from, then it's very hard to have unity. It becomes almost impossible. And love calls for unity and that doesn't mean that there can't be diversity. 
with our, our essentials which are difficult to compromise on and maybe impossible to compromise on but how to reach that point with education with understanding is not easy it's a it's quite a challenge so today we're celebrating in the first reading how a good decision has been reached to resolve the issue of the dispute if the new Gentile converts should have to follow all of the Mosaic law. And the prudent, wise decision under the Holy Spirit was reached that that's not necessary. That it's sufficient that the that they simply uh, do some other basic things. The list is there in the reading. And quite a few resources were needed to reach this uh, decision. And I would say primarily the Holy Spirit, but from a human point of view, there was a digging into the roots of the people, the deepest roots of the Valkyrie. And that digging went back to the prophet Amos and all the other background of the scriptures. So that's the importance then of not just deciding ourselves today on the circumstances we have today, but of being versed in the scriptures, of being exposed to the word of God and letting that be a major criteria of discernment. And then there were issues of roles of authority who spoke clearly. For example, Peter. Peter kind of gave permission by the way he spoke, that we can discuss these things. We don't have to quell and squash this discussion. We can talk about it. And that was very important. And at that point then, Paul and Barnabas do all of their uh, talking. Looks like we have a dead bee here, hanging from this thistle. We were here already a number of times. That guy not moving. So I wonder what hit him. It's interesting to see the little wings here. I'm going to turn around the camera, see if it doesn't swivel on me. I can't get up there. I want to get to the light. Uh, well, that, that bee had better days. And there it's hanging now until uh, Whatever next happens. Now there's another bee over here. But that bee has traveled again. It was onto this thistle here, but it's gone. And then <clears throat> there was that big open discussion and everybody was speaking about the experience and they were all considering and reflecting together and coming to new clarity about the issues, their significance, the priorities. And then James, who was the local leader in Jerusalem, spoke with all the authority of his holiness. You know, he's the martyr we celebrated there a couple of days ago and the first bishop of Jerusalem, and he spoke. And you see, sometimes people have an allergy towards authority, but actually there are two major forces at work in the church, two major dynamics. And one is the charismatic. What uh, 
each one's gifts being brought in in uh, in great vigor and enthusiasm and originality creativity and then there's the institutional aspect even that's in a family you have the person that's very musical very poetic very has great ideas wants to do things suggest things and then you have other people who are you know they want to keep a certain order what we always did and it's that big challenge in humanity to adjust as much as one can for the benefit of growth and development there are bees involved here i'm trying to get them for you but they're very um they're not standing still Oh, there's one over there. You see that one? There, see how they don't stay very long. I thought that bee was coming for me. But not exactly. Can you see the bees? Oh, there's three of them there. You can see the little pouches of pollen or the little packets of pollen attached to their legs. Isn't that marvelous? How industrious they are, how diligent. Wow. <laughs> There were three there and the one flower. This has a leaf a little bit like a fern. I've never seen a fern and flower like this. I don't know if you can hear them. Their little humming is, is very low volume. Good. So you see those leaves there, very much like fern leaves, but I'm not sure if it's in the same, same species of fern, of the same category of ferns. And then we have uh, agreement on all of this. And then today's reading then goes into the, the next step, which is communicating it. And it's communicated clearly, it's a very fixed formula of decision. But the people who came with the question are not sent back on their own. They're sending back a couple of others to witness that what they're going to tell is true. This is part of the institutional thing as well, that a whole community is involved. And it's a very serious matter because this matter actually affects us to this very day, that decision of the church. And it's of huge consequence and significance. So these decisions aren't trivial and they bear a lot of weight. And the theological analysis, which I didn't mention earlier, is very important because of the reasoning involved based on scripture, based of a, on the experience of the church with the gifts of the Holy Spirit being poured out. So you see the theology has a lot of elements in it. Sometimes people can, can excuse me, sometimes people can poo-poo that and it's, uh, it's something serious. So sometimes people say, oh, just give me one piece of scripture and that's it. Well, no, there's a lot more involved. There's a lot more involved. And because God has given us a brain, a mind, but we're also not an isolated being, we're in community, we're together. Because God is love. And this is the Gospel reading today, a very strong contemplation and pondering of God as love. 
and this has plays out in a wonderful way in the community the mystery of god's love and there's so many articulations of it for us in the way we live together then as as god's creatures we live in that spirit of love, in that spirit of goodness, of understanding, of mutual support, of mutual forbearance, of kindness, of respect, of listening, and then of accepting, because unity can't really be enforced. Sometimes it is politically, maybe even in the church a little bit, um, and there needs to be a certain authority to command, obviously, in every society, in every institution, that's also in the church. You have some people just wishing, wishful thinking, a church that, oh, I just do what I want and I'm connected to Christ on my own. And that's not the way it works. That's not the way it worked with Jesus. And that's not the way it worked with the Acts of the Apostles. And so we have adjusting to do because we're living in a very individualistic time when we're completely impregnated with a culture that is just what I think is right and I'm a free person and I decide what I want. Well, you might decide what you want and do what you want, but you mightn't be in communion with the whole church. And that's a laborious process that requires a lot of mental fatigue, of spiritual fatigue, of effort, of community, patience, a stretching of the heart, an opening of the mind, an adjustment of way of doing things, expectations placed on others. So this is a great mystery of the church and it's amazing that after all these years since Jesus first preached here at the Sea of Galilee to the present day the building of the body continues the body of Christ and I find that's fascinating absolutely fascinating you know the plants are fascinating the bees are fascinating uh, all details of nature the DNA the seasons, the cosmos, the universe, the systems of stars, the weather systems, the light, it's just everything. <laughs> it's all so amazing. But the mystery of the church is one extraordinary phenomenon that combines a tremendous delicacy, fragility, because it's exposed to all our own failures and fragility and brokenness and wounds and divisions and hurts over the years and the centuries and the millennia and yet it's thriving and it's growing like this plant is so flourishing look at all the flowers on this or the other tree we saw at the beginning so many berries so much so much fruit and that's the way the church is in the in the course of history the acts of the apostles are a marvelous marvelous testimony to the process and it doesn't hide the limitations and the and the shortcomings of the members, their failures. So I am very happy and grateful to, to have received this gift of faith. Faith in God the Creator, faith in God the Redeemer, faith in the Incarnation, faith in the Resurrection, and faith in the Church, the Body of Christ, where the Holy Spirit is at work. You know, one of the great theological principles understood very early in the Church is that the Holy Spirit is like the soul of the church. So people, I think there's a nice spot here to wish you a wonderful day, wonderful morning. And thank you for joining and being so good to be here. God bless you. We'll have our German shot this evening, God willing, around seven. And maybe some of you will join for mass this afternoon at four. And spread the word. This will be on YouTube after a bit when I get back to the house. We'll upload it on the YouTube channel. These, these Facebook lives are always on YouTube also. And um, Facebook is actually offering uh, the choice every morning now to post it for only 30 days or leave it up forever. And I think there's going to be a problem with space. So I'm really pondering putting the 30 day thing. I haven't done it yet, but I've had the temptation for the last week to do it. 
But since we have it on YouTube, which is very universally accessible, all you need to have is get the link and you can see it, um, then I think we can uh, start posting for, on the 30 day method. And I'm thinking about that, so I, have, I won't do it today, but I'm really thinking about that. If any of you want to chime in, let me know because you're all involved in this and I don't want to decide this on my own either. Let's say a prayer to do the right thing for the best benefit of people. Right now you could scroll back in Facebook, but it's a long, weary, oper burdensome operation, whereas in YouTube you can scroll back much faster. And so that's another thought. So you guys can give me some input what you'd like me to do. And I'm inclining to not post forever, just for 30 days on Facebook. How many times do you go back to a video before 30 days. So this is uh, a thought. Well, thank you anyway for being here. See you later, alligators. It's been a lovely morning without seeing the sun directly, but it's up there. Oops, I thought I was off. Hey, what happened? Oh, I, turned, I didn't turn off the off button. I turned off the wrong one. <laughs> Where is the off button here? Finish.